Hey guys, Omerko here, self-taught web developer. In this video we will work with the layout from Angular Material. The layout is a package that will provide for us, well, these kind of utilities to build responsive UI. To clarify further, by this layout we are able to follow up, well, to observe our changes in browser that could happen, like uh, making our screen smaller or bigger, and based on those changes we can render different content that we wish. As an example here I'm using this layout and when I start making my screen well smaller I will move from three column layout to two column and at the end one column. So here we can see that this angular material can help us with this definitely. Before we start be sure to visit my website where you can find all of my tutorials and courses. Also next to that be sure to sign up for my newsletter and get these amazing deals that I currently have. Now let's start working with our layout. The first thing that I will do here, I will create the component where I will use that layout from Angular Material. To do that I will use command of ng, g for generate, c for component, and I will generate my component in components slash cdk slash layout. Now that we generated our component, we can use it in our project. So for that I will open up my app.component.html file, and here I will first hide this drag and drop component from the last video. If you wish to watch that video, you will have a link down in the description of this one. But right after it, I will set my comment for CDK layout and I will use that component that we just generated, which is app layout. And I will also put the ending comment here, end of CDK layout. The layout as a feature is not directly usable in Angular Material. For that we must also import a proper module. So I will move to my app.module.ts file and here I can import my layout module and I will import that from at angular slash cdk slash layout. Once you import the module at the top be sure also to pass that layout module down in imports array so you can use the layout feature from it. For my example to work I also need to create some sections on my screen, so I will use immediately Angular Material Grid that I, well that Angular Material offers here. So I will go into my components, CDK and that layout component that we generated, and inside of the HTML file I can create Math Grid List, and inside I could create Math Grid Tile, which is one section, and I will put just number one inside of this style. I will also grab this style and copy it five more, five more times. And now I will change the numbers like one, two, three, four, five and six for my six styles, six sections. One cool thing about this grid is that I can use here a well attribute of calls for columns and I can set this here to two, three columns, well as many columns as I wish to have in one row. But we will do this more dynamically, instead of passing this the value to this attribute hard-coded, I will bind this attribute to one of my properties, which can be calls property. I still didn't create this property, but I will create it soon. But this way, we will calculate how much tiles should be presented on our screen and pass that number in this column, so we will always dynamically well, render our grid. Before I move to that, I will just open the CSS file for this layout and I will grab my matte grid tile and I will color that tile so I will pass background color to it of teal so we could have some color on our screen and it is not so blank. Now let's go into our TypeScript file and create those properties that we need. For example we must have that calls property that we just created and I will set that to be the string of three here so by default we should see well our three tiles in one row. I will also create the property that I will name display map and this display map will be well new map and inside I could create the map object well it could be the array so inside I could pass some of the data for example. What I wish to do is with that layout well I wish to observe the changes with my screen and the layout will do that for us well by default but when we access that we will also get some specific properties. For example we will get the breaking points that could happen, for example 
extra small or a small screen or a medium screen. That happens when a layout recognizes one of those screens. So that is why we are also able to pass those breakpoints. And if the condition of those breakpoints uh, match, then we could render our content as we wish. So for example, here in my map, what I wish to do, I will pass the array inside of the array and I will use these breakpoints. And the breakpoints must be imported here at the top from at angular slash cdk slash layout. So now that I have these breakpoints on it, I will have all of these different breakpoints. I can follow up with uh, portrait mode, uh, land, uh, landscape mode and so on, but I will go with a simple example here. So I will follow, so I will track here, well, the small, extra small breakpoint. When that breakpoint happens, I wish to have, well, just one column on my screen. Well, one column in my one row. So now I will grab this array and copy it five more times. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I added one extra, I will remove that one. So now I have breakpoint for extra small, I will have one for small, and it will again render one column. Then here I will have one for medium, which can render, for example, two columns on my screen. Then I will have large with three columns, and I will have extra large with three columns as well. This here is nothing specific to layout. Well, not yet, but soon it will be. The next thing is to use that, well, observer, that breakpoint observer that we can use from layout. So here I will create private property in my constructor, which will be called breakpoint observer. And it must be, well, the type of it must be breakpoint observer as well. And this breakpoint observer must be imported here at the top from at angular slash cdk slash layout. Now that I have this breakpoint observer in my component, I can directly use it here in my constructor. So here I can use this breakpoint observer and on that I will have few methods. One of those methods is observe method, which will observe for our breakpoints. So here we could pass all of the breakpoints inside of the array that we wish to observe. So for example, I wish to observe my breakpoint, which can be extra small. Then I will pass again the same thing for small. Then let's do the same for medium. And I will do for, well, breakpoint.large. And finally, breakpoints.extra-large. So you can see that the same breakpoints are here that we are observing and the same breakpoints are here in our array of data. Now we can match those and by those we could also well render as many columns as we wish. We just need to pass this number of columns in if one of those are matching to our columns property. So because this observer will return the well observable back to us, to this here we can also subscribe directly and we will get some kind of result back. So here, let's see what is that result. To check the result, I will quickly console.log this result and let's visit our screen quickly. On my screen, currently I can see six columns and if I move my screen, those columns will stay in one place because we still didn't pass our layout that we wish dynamically. But one cool thing that we can see is these logs. So if I open up any of these logs, we can see that the result will return the breakpoints property to us and it will ha have all of those breakpoints. For example, well, extra small, small, medium, large and extra large. So for example, if I move to, well, small screen like this, I will find the breakpoint and I can see that the ex extra small breakpoint has a true boolean next to it, which means that we are currently on extra small screen. And the rest of these are, well, those are having false boolean next to it. So here we should render the content that is good for our extra small screen. For example, our one column. So we could see our tiles here, one below another and not, not one next to each other. So let's do that real quickly. Back in my code, I can simply remove this console log and inside of this subscribe, I will use simple for loop and I will use const of query of object dot keys and here I will use result and you, you saw those breakpoints so we can access those breakpoints here. So for each of those breakpoints, 
we will get the query from those. Well, the name of it. So, inside of this for loop, I can check if my result, that breakpoint, so all of those breakpoints, with that specific query that I'm currently looping through, well, if that uh, exists. So, if that exists, with this here, with this if condition, we are checking this one exists, and if, it also, if it's also true, so if that is the case, we can do something. What I wish to do, I wish to grab my calls property that I have, and I will set it equal to something. That something will be my this that display map. So from here that I have, and on this map, I will try to get the property here, and I will get the property of query. So what does this mean? We will check if the name of that breakpoint exists, and also if it's whole if it holds the value of true, which means that we are currently on that breakpoint. And just below, we will assign the number from our breakpoints with that specific breakpoint, which is the query for us. Which means that if I am on a small screen device, well, I will know that because we are observing all of the devices, well, specific breakpoints here, we will know that we are on a small or extra small screen. And by that, we will pull the value from extra small screen, which is number one. Also, if you have this error here, you don't need to worry. This is just because this display get property of query could also hold the undefined value. And that is also correct because we don't really need always to pass here a string. So here I will use as string to tell to this property that we, this here will always be a string. And that's a simple fix. So now to test this here on my browser, I do have my six tiles one next to each other. If I start shrinking my screen here, we can see that at, at some point, well, I will move from three tiles to two tiles because we are observing on those breakpoints. And as we are observing, we will always know if the window changed, like the width of our window, which we just did here. We updated our window. And as that was the case, we also assigned a different column number to our calls property. And that is why we can see different columns here. Well, we can see two columns in one row instead of three columns. And if I move this even further, at some point, we can also see that, for example, on tablet and smart screens, we will have just one tile below another, which is much better and definitely fully responsive. But this will be all for this video, guys. Before you go, be sure to visit my website where you can find all of my tutorials and also all of my courses. So take a look at those as well. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe as I post new content weekly. Thank you all once again and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye bye.